Good morning, everybody. It's me, Nicola Dickens from Free My Cure. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel, whichever the case may be. So I am in this really kind of funky mode. Had a decent weekend. It has definitely been interesting. Um. Wow. Okay, I just saw two horses. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm actually going to leave this part in the video. It threw me off. I am at a park that is, um, I call it the Cowboy Park. Um, but we are at a park that boards and takes care of horses, their own horses. Um, so if you're, if you have a horse and you're coming through and you need a place for your RV for the night or for however long, um, you can actually stay here. They have uh, horse stalls back that way. So you may see horses come walking past by me. That would be kind of cool today. Um, but yeah, this was kind of the first time I've seen any of the horses come up or do anything. So I'm like, wow, that's kind of cool. So I'm hoping they come back around. We'll see. So <laughs> sorry guys, it just kind of threw me off. So it is um, the last week in June, the very last week in June, 4th of July is coming up and you start seeing all the 4th of July things come out and then you see all these people that want to, you know, get up in arms because, oh, the flag is racist and blah, there goes another one, blah, 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 <laughs> Hotel Trans Transylvania. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't read it. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's kind of cool to be here. Um, this is definitely more Western. Uh, this isn't, it, it's mostly dirt where we're at, which I absolutely adore because I can take my dogs out and I don't have to worry about the pads or their paws getting overheated. Um, so, yeah, it's really nice. Um, the little stall that we have, I have all kinds of stuff growing. I'll, I'll have to take a short video and, and put a, a shorts up so you can see what I've done. <laughs> so yeah, not even when I don't have my property yet, I still <laughs> try to have to have my gardens. I gotta have my flowers and I gotta have my vegetables. Fruits and vegetables, gotta love them. Okay, so we are working on the anti-anxiety workbook. I think we're in like webisode 9 or 10. I can't remember anymore. I apologize. I have, oh, I'm so exhausted. It has been a couple of days, let me tell you. I'm trying to get myself back on a schedule. Um, I ended up letting everything like fall apart for the last kind of two, two and a half weeks. I've been going through a kind of depression. It sucked. Um, I just, I haven't, I, bleh, that's it. That's all I have in me. And I'm like, okay, the only person that's gonna change this is me. And so I'm trying, I'm really, really trying. So, um, yeah, that is one of the things about being bipolar that really, really sucks is that you'll have these ups and these times when you're like, okay, and you're just cruising along, you're getting things done, you're feeling accomplished, you're doing really good. And then all of a sudden, one thing, one little thing is all it takes to totally derail you. And that's exactly what happened. There they go. <laughs> he's photo, he's video amp. So yeah, that is, um, I'm actually more surprised they haven't gone down to the river bottom with the horses instead of bringing them up just up here. But um, yeah, they're beautiful, beautiful horses. Ah, I'll have to take a walk about and show you guys a little bit about what's around. It is really nice. I did start to shoot a video for the, my RV channel that I have and it was just, I, I need to get my um, stabilizer out and get it charged and reshoot the video on my stabilizer because it was just too bouncy. So, before we get this going, I, <laughs> so, kind of a funny story here while we're doing this. Well, it's not a long story. It's really not even much of a story. It's called your girl doesn't know how to read directions. So <laughs> we're going to try this again. <laughs> so we did fix it. 
and charged it and put it back on and made it work right because I don't know how to read directions. What can I say? You're my dumbass. <laughs> so, uh, this week's stupid award goes here. <laughs> so, let's try this again, as always, guys. Fuck cancer, fuck anxiety, fuck depression, fuck COVID, and with the good and out with the bad. Looks like we're feeling it. So yeah, it's totally uh, what it was. Is I had it plugged in. It was overheating. It needed a uh, cool down time. And instead of uh, yeah, me trying to look at the directions and go, oh, okay, that's how that works. I just went uh, and moved on. <laughs> so just in case, I did, however, bring the trusty torch over just in case. Heaven forbid. Now, one thing I will say about this one is I really don't like how stuck it gets sometimes. But you can use these piece of wire and it is, it's like a little wrench and it loosens everything up really nicely. <laughs> and it helps get it back on without you getting wax and crap all over your can. So I couldn't remember when I filled this last. I should have opened it up and took a look, but how would I do something smart? So I am putting in here a uh, Pina Colada Shatter. It is a 50-50 hybrid. I wonder if we'll get any of the uh, Pina Colada taste to her. Just because that, the terpenes that come out of the Pina, Pina Colada um, flower are, are amazing. Okay, do I have them in the right ears again? Because I've done that. I've put them in the wrong ears because they still kind of fit. The only difference is, is that um, every time your hair moves around the headphone part, it, my, or at least my hair, um, makes it go off. There we go. Okay. As always, guys, fuck you, fuck anxiety, fuck depression, fuck COVID, in with the good and out with the bad. Retain some of that pina colada in the flower. It's not nearly as as um, recognizable as others, but it's still very very good. Okay, so let's get into this. Um, at first, we're gonna start off with our beautiful little coloring pages like normal. So believe in your dreams, and they may come true. Believe in yourself and they will come true. Um, you can't expect life to have meaning. You have to find one for it, which is 100% true. You know, I try to explain to my kids that, you know, in life, there's really just that one thing. One thing. Um, and 
you can have two kids from the same family have two totally different ideas of what that dream could be. I love it because my brother and I, we were raised the same, we grew up the same, we had separate father, but we would, we were together constantly. Um, he grew up not wanting children at all, not wanting marriage, nothing to do like that. He's never even really had a long-term relationship. Um, he's like two weeks is my max, sorry. After that, I can't do it. And um, we've talked about it. I'm like, okay, why? Why is that so hard for you? What's the problem? Why is over two weeks? And he's like, I saw mom. That, that bitch was crazy and I, I can't. I'm sorry. And it made sense. Um, it would have probably turned me off on, on long-term relationships or even having kids um, if I were more like him. I wanted kids. I wanted a chance to um, be a better parent than my mom and dad were. Um, I thought I could I could bring so much um, realism and love and everything to their life, and it'd be great. Everything's great. Um, to whereas I grew up being punished and being abused, severely abused, sexually, physically, and emotionally abused. That I didn't want to have to be that. I didn't want to say no. I was that parent. Um, and by the time I figured out, oh shit, I better get him on, you know, something, it was too late. Um, it was absolutely too late. Uh, they both had already set in um, and we had our, you know, our issues, our struggles. Um, and you kind of watch how they, they grow up and, and I don't know, I don't know how many of you guys have done this with your kids. <laughs> But we had, you know, we had a group of like 10 of us adults or 10 of us families, I guess. And you would always sit back and you'd look at the kids, all of our kids and all of the parents and everybody. And you're like trying to think of where the, your child or the children would grow up to. So, you know, we'd have, I don't know, some of those funky conversations. Oh, yeah, well, your kid. Um <laughs> Because we're drunk and we're playing and, and that kind of a thing. And it, it's crazy how they got one of my kids correct and one of them not even close. Um, so I'm like, okay. Um, I guess it really doesn't matter how we do this as long as we don't abuse our children. I mean, because even my kids. Oh, mom, you were abusive. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> okay, but... Because I didn't say no to you? No, because after you know, after you and dad split, you were with another, you know, two other, three other guys. I'm sorry, did those guys do something to you? No. Your dad left me. And it was always this, you know, <laughs> I'm like, whatever. So, and they still have it, you know. And they, oh, they constantly, oh, the older one's your favorite. No, the younger one's your favorite. Then talking, of course. No, brother's favorite, brother's favorite, and back and forth and back and forth. But it is definitely funny to see how things turn. Um, I can see some of my mental issues that I got from my mother. Sadly, I can also see the set of mental issues that my oldest son got from me. So it's like, mm, it's, it's very genetic. It is very, very genetic. So if you don't start out younger, and I'm a full believer of this right now, um, good discipline is good. doesn't matter if it's a spanking on the butt. As long as it is appropriate for the event, your kids will turn out great. So don't worry too much about it. You know, don't beat them on everything or, you know, give them a... Uh, you know, that type of discipline hard every time, you've got to reward them. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is the one thing that I can truly say our generation was all about. Gen X was, um, I, we were, I was literally, I was out to school, or out the house, I want to say six in the morning, because I had to take, I had to go 40 miles, on two different city buses and then walk four blocks over um 
to go to school every morning. So I had to leave the house at like 6 o'clock in the morning to have my brother and I both. Um, so I was always the one prepping food and doing stuff like that. My mother was not maternal at all. Um, I cleaned up after my brother and I. I took care of my brother and I. I made all of our food. I, um, I did all of that. That was, I was, I, I did that mom thing. Because my mom was, was high or, or not there or drunk or in a room for days. Um, and I actually, I did kind of end up with that to where I get into that bed. I don't want to leave my room type of a thing. So now I'm in this 300, 350 square foot, uh, trailer. Um, I make it a point to, to, I get up and come to the living room every day. It's not something that I can do. I won't lay on the couch out here at all. Won't nap on it. Won't do any of that. No, that's a really not feeling well and I will um but the bedroom's for laying this part this area is for you know relaxing watch tv or whatever um and so I've, I've kind of made sure that I've done that to get myself out of my room um with my kids I especially when my kids were younger I came out I was out every day I owned a business inside my home I had I owned a very successful business with employees out of my home um I took, I take, I took care of all of the bills, all of everything at home. Um, my my ex husband now uh, paid, you know, for whatever whatever we were going to be doing. So if we're going to go to dinner or if we had whatever, that's what we did. So, kind of looking at it from my mom to me to my to my son. My son has now like reverted back to to my mom. Um, he has had umpteen million drug issues, um, and you see this in, in mental health, and that's why I bring it up in this section. I am not trying to spread hate on my kids. My kids are amazing kids. They actually uh, both are very good. They do a lot of work every month. They both get up. They could both go to work every day. They, you know, they're, they're very outstanding good kids. I'm very proud of them, um, but... In seeing that, I can see um, my kids never made breakfast on their own. Um, that's not something they ever did. I always, even on weekends, made their breakfast. It, even if it was just a bowl of cereal, it didn't matter. I did breakfast. I came out of, I was out of bed and doing stuff every morning. That by the time the kids got there, I had their breakfast ready and their lunches ready to go. Um, and that was just how I did it. Um, and then I would work all day. I picked them up from school, I dropped them off at school, I did field trips with them, everything. So I was a very full-time parent, unlike my mom, who wouldn't come out of the room for days. Now, once my kids got older, and I'm talking sophomore, junior, in high school, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't need to do that anymore, and I didn't. Um, and that's when I didn't come out of my room for days, because if I did, um, the house was always a mess. I was always cleaning every time I did anything. Um, my oldest room became the junk pile. I mean, and I will say this, oh, goodness, Lord help me, but I still have not seen my grown son's apartment. Um, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> It's probably 10 times better because it's now him and he wants people to come over and that kind of a thing. But oh my God, through high school. Wow. I don't know what, what that boy did. So, moving on. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the ABCs. Uh, the ABC psychological model can help you identify and modify your anxious thoughts. Here's how it works. Activating event, the event that will create the anxiety. Belief you think you are not up to it, that you cannot overcome it. The consequence, you feel very anxious and depressed. Disputing, you challenge this belief. Effect, you feel better, able to overcome this obstacle. 
Um, let's look at an example. Your boyfriend or girlfriend has just left you. That is the activating event. You think that no one else will ever love you, and you think you're going to end up alone. That's the belief. You are depressed, and you lock yourself away at home. That's the consequence. There are so many people in the world. There must be someone who is right for you, who you will love, and who you will, and who will love you. Um, <laughs> that is the disputing. And then you find a smile again and make yourself beautiful and go out. Um, that is the effect. So, I decided I was going to um, put two of mine, that my recent ones that, that took me kind of out of commission for two and a half weeks. So, I put them on here. These are ones that I am actually currently going through and having a hard time with. So, um, I'm not completely through the ABCs yet with both of these, but we're getting there. And sometimes it may take you a little while to sit and contemplate and look at, and that's okay. Take your time, do this at your pace. This is how this works. This is for you, for your mental health. And these are things that I will actually go back and when I'm looking through the video and I'm like, yeah, you, right there, you. <laughs> so, you. <laughs> so, husband's getting mad, not always at me, but he gets mad. So, let me put some context to this. Um, my husband's a redhead. Con context. <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. No, my husband is a redhead. Um, which basically tells you he kind of fly off the handle at times. Um, However, my, my husband, I like to say, him yelling and screaming, even if it's the couch because of something the couch did, not me, um, it seems to calm him. I don't know why, but it calms his anxieties. It calms some of those worries. But, take mine not higher. So, <laughs> it's a tough one. Um, I, I can't handle it. It's that yelling and screaming. I, I try, I start looking for a place to hide. Um, I can't do it. It's, I mean, if I could, if I could let you in my head to see the screaming reel my mother left up here for me, along with every guy she ever dated, along with Every guy she ever made money from, believe it or not, any of them. So, um, I, I, I go into those flashbacks and the first thing that I'm thinking is, okay, it's going to hurt. I don't know what's going to hurt, but it's going to hurt. Um, and... and any, you know, that pain response is simple. You, you don't want to be in pain, so you're going to run. And that's kind of how I get. Only we're in a 350 foot, square foot trailer that there's no hiding from. Even if I go into my room and I close the door, it doesn't. It doesn't hide me from it. So it's, it's really, 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 really hard. Um, we've gotten to the point to where there's no news in the house, period. Nope. Not watching it. Nope. Don't care. Um, you want to put the news on and I'll wait for the weather. Okay. Can do this. Mute it. Um, because inevitably that is going to be something that's going to set him off first thing in the morning. And how do I hear it? I can't handle it. So I have tried to find different ways of making it easier for him and for me. But it is still, <laughs> it is still a practice on how to fix it. So um, I feel like he's always going to blow up and I'm going to always have anxiety about it. So that would be my belief. The activating events are when he gets mad and starts screaming. I get depressed, 
and I have been and on and off for a couple of weeks and I'm finding and finding motivation is really hard um, and so that is the challenge no that is the consequence my bad the challenge is so I guess I'd better figure out how to live with it um, so, in, and of course, the um, effect is not all done yet because I need to figure out how to live with it a little bit better. And then hopefully that, that effect will be there and I'll be able to go, Phew. okay. <laughs> so, uh, worry number two. Um, my 18-year-old Malamute has, I've started noticing patches of his hair falling out. Um, he has... The same type of spots on his on his paws that my other dog had that had cancer. Um, so that kind of looked cancerous, I'm not sure. Um, he is whining a lot more. Um, he up until I want to say the heat, he really wasn't doing too bad. This summer is really getting him getting to him. Um, but the last couple of summers we spent it at much better you know, temperatures with him because we were Flagstaff and stuff. So, and it never got over like 80 and it was perfect for him. Um, so yeah, he's having a hard time right now. <clears throat> um, he sleeps a lot too. He'll, he'll lift his head up, kind of look and make sure and see wherever I'm at. And then he lays his head back down, but, and he sleeps a lot. He's just, it's, he's old. It's, it's that time. And if, Ever, he starts getting to where he's like in more pain um, we will revisit it a bit <laughs> because I won't I, I will not make him suffer that way he's been my best friend for 18 years I will not do that to him and oh yeah 18 years and it wasn't always an easy 18 years let me tell ya <laughs> a little shit um, it makes me want to cry all the time because the last several years I've been living for him. Um, that's a hard one. And of course, um, and what I mean by I've been living for him is um, when I get suicidal, I'm going to have to just read through it. I just don't think I need to be here anymore. Um, I go lay with him and I know I can't leave him. I could never leave him because then he would, he would know he, well, what did I do? Where's my mom? Um, he's been my best friend for a very long time. And so when I get suicidal like that, and the dogs are great, um, I can snuggle with them. I can make them promises and I keep their promises. I'm, you don't lie to an animal. You just don't. Um, it's worse than lying to yourself. Um, but, and a lot of times just even going on, you know, walks with them and, you know, exploring and, you know, last couple of years we've been inseparable, but we've been doing a lot of really fun things. So I have a lot of really good memories and I know he's had a really, really good life. But it's going to be that time, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> I know I'm going to have to put him to sleep, and I'm preparing myself for it. I just need more time. So, um, yeah, I haven't really gotten through both of those yet. I don't want to... Because it always brings tears. It is just something that I don't know. I just there's just so much ugly behind my eyes, and I, I think that's why I do all the flowers and stuff. It's because there is there is so much ugly behind my eyes. When I close my eyes at night, that's all I see is that ugly and 
when my eyes are open, I want to see pretty. And so, that's why. That's why I do some of the things that I do. Huh. Okay, I think it's time to smoke. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to bring the tissue out. we hold on to a past, a bad past experience is turning into an absolute truth. And in every similar situation, situation, we imagine that the same thing will happen. In this way, we feed our anxiety. Take a step back, learn from your mistakes, and take action. Example, I'm afraid to go to the job interview. For what reason? the last one went bad me and I didn't get the job. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna prepare this interview better, find out more about the company, and do my best. Great way of saying that. So, past is bad. Number one, I'm afraid to meet new people. I've always been given my, or I've always given my all, and I've been taken advantage of abuse or tossed aside because no one cared. So that's what the past was and what that behavior always was. So now I'm going to have to stay a bit guarded and walk through the park with the dogs and start getting used to people again as a first step. And I have to kind of do it to see if it helps us. Or it works. <laughs> Step number two, money. When it comes to paying bills or really anything to do with money, I believe it's because my brother and I had to start with jobs when we were about nine and help with the household because mom was a single mother. Um, that was very true. There was also a time that my mother had started saving up money because we needed to move. 
her boyfriend was very abusive. He was abusive to her. He was abusive to us. Um, I mean, he would even expose himself to my, my brother. And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, he was, he was a problem. But we were... Well, there was no but. Uh, he was a bad guy. Um, we found a duffel bag that had some money in it. A lot of money. And we didn't know that my mother had started to save money so that she could get us out of that situation. We had no idea. We didn't know that she even noticed that we were in that situation. Um, so we had taken a large amount of it over time um, and we spent it on bullshit, like candy and bullshit. Um, and we lost Christmas that year from that, I, I think. I believe my brother told me that. The only thing I remember about that is him, that guy. Um, I, I remember that guy. I mean, I remember that guy very well. And I don't want to. <laughs> um, but my brother, oh, was pissed um, because we lost Christmas. We weren't getting any of our Christmas presents. And I think she said that she had us open them up so she, we could see what we weren't going to get. Uh, but he just went, he fell straight on his face, his whole body straight down, flat like an alligator, just bam, and he rammed the wall in our house. And I mean, I mean, with his head, and he put a dent in that fucker. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so, and that could have something to do with that whole anxiety about money, I don't know, um, but, yeah, that was one of the events that happened, um, surrounding what our action was and what happened, uh, my mother had done one thing before, I don't know if it was before or after, um, I had bought, or I had stolen one of those, and this is like the late 70s, I think, um, little 25 cent bag of chips, which in the, I want to say, late 70s, the 25 cent bag of chips were, are, were like the 99 cent bag of chips. That's what I can remember. But I stole one, and um, my mom caught me in the car, obviously, because I couldn't wait to open it up and eat it. Um, and uh, on our defense, I was only like seven, maybe, um, and we were surviving on what I was able to cook that evening. So we were surviving on mm, rice with cinnamon, with butter, cinnamon, and sugar, ramen, ramen was a very popular one, um, and sandwiches, uh, cereal, when we had milk. Um, Back in the day, my mom was on public access at one point in time and she got food stamps or whatever or food boxes or something. And it was more popular to get powdered milk in those than real milk. So, you know, how you go to the, you know, the, to those places now and you get a gallon of milk. Well, back then you got a bag of powdered milk. And no, it didn't taste anything like milk, and no, it wasn't any good. Um, you couldn't add cocoa. I mean, I know how to do it now, but back in the day, you couldn't add cocoa to it to make it any better. I mean, it was just bad. Um, and that's what we had. So if there was something like macaroni and cheese, we probably wouldn't have eaten it with that because we didn't like the milk. Um, we, ate, we ate a lot of dry cereal, um, rice, cinnamon, rice, butter. Um, and things kind of like that, um, because I was a, a 
big company. That's all I needed to have to cook. And they didn't have the easy conveniences that we have today. Um, so, that is my example for what reason. And so now, I'm going to sit down and make a budget and learn about budgeting a little bit better. And that would probably make Don a little bit happier and maybe then maybe he wouldn't be as stressed out. And so I'm kind of trying to help the whole situation. I know that was one of the things with the money whole thing. Um, he doesn't understand it. He's like, how do you get anxiety attacks when you're checking your bank account? I'm like, <laughs> I've never had money. I just, you know, I was always a poor person. Nothing personal. I was watering my garden out here this morning and I can cut it here. It up in me. But I started coughing as I was coming out the door to water my stuff. And then the guy down the way is like, virus? And I go, yeah, it's that, that weed virus. And the dude like looked and he's like, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, it took him a minute. I was like, holy crap. So yeah, it would probably make God a little bit happier. At least I, I would imagine it would. Okay. We went right along. That's a good, pretty good day. But okay. We're going to do this one more time. As always, guys, fuck cancer, fuck anxiety, fuck depression, in with the good and out with the bad. I think I had headphone intolerance. Because, like, this one doesn't want to stay in very well. And then it, like, <laughs> somebody's walking over my grave. And then we're gonna, and we're gonna have a problem because I'm supposed to be uh, cremated, burned, and put in the water. Yeah, so I don't know. It's just really weird. Oh, my ears are fun. Um, my model. Think of someone you think is cool, self confident, someone you admire someone you would like to look like. It could be someone you really know, or an actor, actress, a singer, or musician, oh, excuse me, or even a fictional character or superhero. God. Close your eyes. What are his or her qualities? The way he or she talks. The way he or she stands. Immerse yourself in this person. Now think of someone or something right now. A problem in your relationship, an upcoming business meeting? Close your eyes. How would your role model act in this situation? What would he or she say? What would he or she do? This little stimulation exercise is very useful in some situations to gain confidence and, and, and act more relaxed. So I do not have a picture. Um, the reason why is because I have always believed that I want to be me. I don't want to be anybody else. I don't want to look like anybody else. I am me. I am with all of my cuts, scars, bruises, everything. I am me. By me putting somebody else's picture on this page says that I am no longer me. And I'm going to remain me besides that. Um, the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard court case ended about a week or two ago. And they are being shown in very, very different light than what anybody could have ever imagined. Um, and that being said, if, in my belief, in my opinion, let's say 
Amber Heard was my hero. Okay? Because she was a domestic violence. Da 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 da. And I had watched the court case. I would be in another manic issue. I wouldn't feel good. I'd feel sick to my stomach. I, I you would have these issues. I, I would. Um, and then your whole persona, I guess, could end up blowing up in your face. Um, that is not what I want to relate myself to. Um, not in today's type of people. So none of them have passed either because we really don't know them on that level. So let's say Abraham Lincoln. Well, maybe he had a, a, a closet fetish that that would destroy everything. I don't know. I'm not saying he does. I'm just saying. Um, But that now <clears throat> infringes on this persona of what you've made for yourself. So now, all of a sudden, you've got to reinvent yourself. And, and if I didn't know, I mean, am I an abuser? And that's what it goes. And it just can combine itself so bad. So I oh, never say, never, never, never do this. Um, characters are the same thing. Characters... I have actually talked to authors, and I've read their, their books, and I've talked to them after the fact, and what I have built that character to be may not be that of what the author actually has it, that character to be. And I find this character being a very positive influence, and then find out that the actual character, the one, not the one I had built up in my head, but the actual character, um, wouldn't have done any of that. So it's kind of a slippery slope. Um, you can talk, you can say somebody's cool. You can admire a quality about them. However, don't submerge yourself to this point and, and want to look like them and, and want to completely emulate because it could be that. Here we are. So, um, we are the next set of coloring pages. That means this is the end of it for us today. So, love the life you live. Live the life you love. And then, courage is not the absence of fear, but the ability to overcome it. Absolutely. We are going to be coming back up, or when we come in next week, we will be doing the boat anxiety versus truth. I think we may have only like 20 pages left. Anyway, in this. We are almost done. Oh, I know we're almost done with this. And I found the sticky notes that we should have had the whole time. So, so, much. so yeah, there we are. Lots of cool fun stuff that we, we get to play with. The email is working. You know, I, I got to remember to uh, read the directions. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> let's do this one last time. As always, guys, fuck cancer, fuck anxiety, fuck depression, fuck COVID, even if it's good, not it's bad.